Listeners and subscribers, hope all is well. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, or since its inception, you know that I've sort of fallen off, at least since about two months ago, as it says right here in my last video. That's probably been a little longer than that, but I wanted to let you know that I am back. I relocated, and I didn't have a stable Wi-Fi connection, and nor was my phone 3G or 4G enabled, so I wasn't able to do any uploads. I was able to keep up with the news and kind of watch and see what's going on out there in the greater geopolitical sphere and also here in uh, hometown USA. Now that I'm upgrading a little of my equipment and consolidated it, it should be easier for me to upload, especially since I have a stable internet connection. So that's basically the long and short of why I had dropped off the map for a while. So I apologize for not providing a catharsis to many of my listeners. I did want to say a few things. I don't necessarily have an episode outline today. There's just a few things I wanted to go over that have been going on. Um, number one, of course, is being the government shutdown. I am aware there's a shutdown. You must have been living under a rock inside the United States if you don't know there's a government shutdown. Perhaps you may not know some of the implications the shutdown has been touted to have. Uh, many people have been talking about food stamps being delayed or possibly the funding for the food stamp program lapsing completely. Now, while that could be a possibility, many places like Virginia, for example, is to receive their SNAP benefits early due to the government shutdown. Arizona is another area as well who will be issued uh, SNAP benefits early amid the government shutdown. Uh, Delaware as well, and we also have California. Now, these are just four of many states, I'm sure, who are instituting this early um, SNAP benefits program uh, release for their funds, and this is due to the government shutdown. Uh, also, there have been talks about the federal shutdown, meaning tax refunds might be delayed, which is a another one of those economic indicators, because when we're talking about roughly $140 billion worth of tax refunds. And typically when people get their tax refunds, they spend the money and it goes back into the economy relatively quickly, which means that you have growth. When you don't have growth, you have contraction or shrinking. And that's when people start using the R word, the recession word. And I'm not saying that that's what we're looking at here, but just looking at the federal shutdown of, of, of tax returns possibly being delayed, food stamps being uh, impacted, and uh, of course, the 800,000 federal employees that are without pay, and I believe it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 60% of people that, uh, or 60% of these employees work outside of Washington, D.C. So these aren't your elites, you know, these aren't your Clintons or your Kissingers that are um, being impacted. These are, for the most part, average, everyday Americans. Now, as you also may know, TSA agents have been calling off sick. They've been calling off sick in record numbers, almost double what they, the rate they normally do. And this is sort of in protest to what's been happening, uh, them receiving no pay and having to come to work. Now, some of the workers, uh, some of the 800 workers are either forced to stay home without pay or forced to come to work without pay. So I just wanted to clear that up. But even if food stamp funding, the, the, fun, the funding for the food stamp program doesn't run out and tax returns aren't delayed, that the panic or the unrest that this could incite if people st start to believe that this is a possibility, um, that could be particularly troubling. Now we're on the 25th, 26th uh, day of the longest ever government shutdown, uh, depending on when I decide to upload this. And right now there's no end in sight. And with each passing day, there are more implications and more impacts to the private, the individual citizen. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you know I'm not inclined to believe that things that happen in these, in the political spheres are 100% political, nor are they one-sided. They're, they're normally multifaceted. And what I mean by that is this border wall debate, the reason why this shutdown is in place, I believe is a facade. I think they're trying to see, and by they I mean the powers who shouldn't be, are trying to see just how far Americans can be pushed. And let me tell you, if last year or just six months ago, someone were telling me that next year the government would be holding wages of American citizens hostage, that food stamps might be impacted and not paid out and tax returns may be delayed, I would say you were listening to the wrong YouTuber, okay? You were listening to the wrong person 
and they might have been misinformed. But it's all about how it's spun, right? Now this is spun, like this is happening because of a border wall, so now that's where the focus is. I don't think that $5 billion for 200 miles of wall, which is only 10% of the over 2,000 mile border, is a reason to be shutting down this government. Now, before I really go on, I think I should say a few things. Very few would deny that America needs some form of border security. That's not really what this debate is about. If you think a Congress or a president or a border wall is going to solve your problems, you're more short-sighted than you might realize. The two-party system is used and played against the people more often than it is used to help them. And that's just a fact of the matter. If we can't accept a hallmark idea like that, you might be on the wrong channel. And let me just say something really quick to paint a picture. Arizona alone in the last three months has received over 12,000 immigrants, okay? And a small fraction of those came over illegally across the border. They were brought into our country because of the immigration system we have in place. Now, I know um, one of my last videos was talking about the caravan, and I talked about if you think the caravan is bad, well, pay attention to this, right? Because... Over the last three months, Arizona receiving 12,000 migrants, that's 4,000 migrants a month, okay? That is just about the number the migrant caravan a few months ago was at uh, before they were poised to enter the United States. The numbers dropped off to just, just over 3,500, I believe it was. Um, Arizona alone, again, 12,000 migrants. So if you think the border wall is going to solve all these issues, you've got another thing coming. Again, a president and a Congress is not going to solve our problems. This two-party system is the problem. And then you have things like the mainstream media compounding issues as well. So if we can't agree on those core issues, again, you, you might be on the wrong channel, but go ahead and stick around for a good laugh. So yes, this all could be political theater and the Republicans trying to get what they want and the Democrats trying to get what they want. You can believe that. Or you can believe the much more likely scenario that everything that's been happening here in the United States from power outages to disaster emergency preparedness drills to government shutdowns and wages being withheld are just precursors of what's to come. We've heard Trump talk about national emergency and national emergencies were touted during Obama's administration as well. But I think what's really interesting is during these national emergencies, during these undefined national crises, an array of very interesting executive orders and laws open up to the president. They become available once this national emergency is declared, and let's just take a look at some of them. Now, I have here, just in a Word document, a couple of executive orders I had in a, a previous file. I've gone over them, I think it was on a blog, and maybe a couple of videos before in the past. So you can go ahead and Google any number of these. I've just pointed out a few I'd like to bring to your attention. Now, these executive orders don't automatically come into effect when a national emergency is declared, but these are just some of the many that could potentially be instituted. And I just wanted to show you what... Because when a, when a president declares a national emergency, he, he can't do anything he wants. The laws that are already available to him are his toolkit. And these laws are indeed already available to him should a national emergency arise. Now, I'm of the mind that the government doesn't want to declare this willy-nilly. I'm of the mind that they probably want to see the people rioting or at each other's throats before they institute something like this. So that way they have a good excuse. And... I don't think anything would get the people rioting faster than delayed tax refunds or not paying out food, uh, food stamps or SNAP benefits. Again, that's 40 million people impacted by food stamps and SNAP benefits alone. And these are typically the most economically disadvantaged. So when you have economically disadvantaged individuals unable to purchase their food and provide for themselves, you will have rioting and looting. And one has to wonder if that isn't what the powers who shouldn't be want. So let's just go ahead and dive into this. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize control uh, of the communication media. Okay, Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Executive Order 11004 allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate and establish new populations or new locations for populations. Now, that sounds something like right out of Agenda 2021 and Agenda 2030, right? Re relocating um, vast swaths of the populations. And I think this one's very interesting because lo establishing new locations for populations has long been touted under Agenda 2021, Agenda 2030, and that's another can of worms, but... 
Um, I think we've seen parts of this instituted with the California fires, people being burned off the lands, and direct energy weapons, advanced tactical lasers. Again, another can of worms, but I would just suggest you maybe Google a few of these terms if you aren't already familiar with them. But moving on, Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authority to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crisis. That's very interesting as well because we just talked about the potentiality of a contracting economy. And even if the U.S. economy isn't... Um, necessarily in trouble we see weakening economies uh, all across the pond matter of fact the world's largest hedge fund manager made mention that the u.s might be losing its status as a reserve currency and that the next running up competitor would be china wow Executive Order 11310 grants authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plans set out in executive orders, to institute industrial support, to establish judicial and legislative liaison, to control all aliens, to operate penal and correctional institutions, and to advise and assist the president. And uh, lastly, we have this jewel, Executive Order 11921, which allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salary, credit, and the flow of money in U.S. financial institutions in any undefined national emergency. That's pretty important. It also provides that when the president declares a state of emergency, Congress cannot review the action for six months. And isn't it interesting that we're kind of at this deadlock in, in Congress where we're at an impasse because of the divided House and Senate? So these are all factors that kind of play in together when you're looking at these executive orders and then you start hearing things on the news that fall in line with a greater plan, if you will, to, to bring in a tyrannical uh, world order, these start to become concerning. Now, I'm not saying anything is for sure, but definitely when you start to see wages of Americans being held hostage and uh, looming food shortages because the government shutdown also affects the FDA, I believe it's the FDA's inspection of food in some areas, which could increase the risk of foodborne illness. We could see more recalls, as we've seen all throughout 2018, salmonella and E. coli um, on products everywhere from whey, which affected, you know, Ritz crackers and um, other products, to romaine lettuce and ground turkey. Uh, who knows? These could be tests of sorts to prepare the, the human psyche for when food starts flying off the shelves. Now, this could all be political theater, as I stated, or this could be what preppers and others of the ilk have been getting ready for. A shutdown in services and food shortages. Again, I'm not saying this is what's about to happen. I'm saying this is probably precursors to what is going to come into the future. I'm more inclined to the idea that these are, these are tests. This is just something to see how far the American people can be pushed, how complacent they'll be when the totalitarian tiptoe sneaks up on their front doorstep. Now, I am aware that I may have said some things that might have upset some of my more conservative viewers, so let me just say it's hard to understate the importance of a physical impediment if we're talking border security. Okay, I, I just want to make that clear. But I also wanted to, in this episode, remove the optics of strictly politics and try to get people to see things from a multifaceted angle rather than just approaching things from, from one viewpoint. I think it's important to do that in these situations to understand that when we make these approaches here on California Carter, we often take things from a spiritual angle, a political angle, and a more uh, an angle that, that encompasses more alternative views and alternative narratives than simply what's being fed from mainstream media or that's out in the greater sphere of the... Uh, the public consciousness. So with that being said, I want to thank you for stopping by. You could have been anywhere else today and you suffered through this with me. So um, thank you. California Carter signing off. Expect more content since I am back. Take care.